Welcome back. Today I want to talk about the wonderful and glorious freeze response. And it's something that you might not have heard of very often. In fact, you may have never heard of it until you came to this channel. It's something that can arise in your meditation. Even in the early stages, you might begin to notice it. Definitely in the later stages, you will notice this wonderful freeze response come over the body. And so it's very good to have an idea of what this is, where it's coming from, how it works, and where it's going. So let's get into all of that now. So first, I think it's a good idea that we have an idea about our nervous system and the two primary channels that we, it's, it's actually one channel. It's all from the 10th cranial nerve, all right? And so people get mad if I don't mention that it's one channel. It's one nerve, but it spreads out and it kind of wanders through the body. And so they actually adopted that name for the nerve. It's a wandering nerve. It seems to go everywhere through the body, so they called it the wanderer. And that's what vagus means, wander. And so it's wandering into the front of the body, and it's wandering into the back of the body. And those are the two primary complexes of the vagus nerve, the ventral vagal and the dorsal vagal. So if you want to get an idea about that, you can see that one is on the front, and one is on the back. And when I'm explaining this, it hilariously reminds me of the mullet. Do you remember the mullet haircut? They would have very short hair on the front and very long hair on the back. And so that he said it was business to the front and party in the back. <laughs> And this is a wonderful uh, way to think about the vagus nerve. It is divided into business and party. <laughs> so which is which? First of all, the ventral vagal is a parasympathetic system that we use in the outward world. So when we are at home and comfortable with our family, we're, when we're at home and comfortable at our work, when we are at home and comfortable at a party and we're enjoying ourselves and we're conversing back and forth and we're dynamic, well then we are in the ventral vagal system and all of our, all of our nervous system lights up in the face and you can see that we're enthused and we're happy and we're there, right? That's the ventral vagal system at work. So. When you think of the two vagal systems, the two complexes, think ventral vagal is party to the front. Dorsal vagal is introspect to the back. Party to the front, introspect, withdraw, and go into absorption eventually through the dorsal vagal in the back. Now, in deep meditation, we use the long exhale to stimulate the dorsal vagal. So that long exhale puts pressure as the diaphragm empties the lungs and pushes up. There's more pressure on the thoracic cavity and all of that pressure goes backwards towards the dorsal vagal complex. So that continuous pressure is what stimulates and activates the dorsal vagal nerve and you can actually begin to feel that it's kind of a, a an ecstatic kind of feeling and so the yogi says i feel bliss and that's the beginning of that bliss is that dorsal vagal coming into play and so that makes the exhale extremely important doesn't it in fact do you remember that that game that your friends would ask you if you were deserted on an island, what is the one thing that you would want to bring? And people say, oh, it's my book. Or, you know, oh, it's my favorite book. Or, oh, it's my favorite video game, if I could bring that. Or, you know, oh, it's, it's uh, you know, utensils. I would want to make sure that I can cut the coconut, you know? <laughs> well, if I was deserted on an island 
on a meditative island, and the only thing that I could have was forest, make the outbreath longer. If that was the only thing that I could bring, that's the only instruction that I could have, that's the one I would pick. It is the most important of all the other instructions. It's the key log to all of this yoga. If the exhale is not longer, you will not have a good chance of stimulating that dorsal vagal complex with the outbreath, with the extra thoracic pressure, right? That's why it's so important. So as we continuously awaken that dorsal vagal, we get into this wonderful freeze response. That's what activates it. So the party is in the front and the business, the work of meditation is in the back. Of course, when you get into that freeze response, it's just wonderful, it's ecstatic, it's glorious. I'm gonna go through a lot of the sensations that you might feel, but suffice to say, it's, it's just a wonderful thing. And so then that becomes the new party. That becomes the most enjoyable thing and it overshadows any kind of enjoyment that you've had in the ventral vagal, which is your outward life. So now you have two dynamics, the interior world and the outward life. And it's very funny that in the polyvagal system, they often work with trauma. And so as they work with trauma, they work with people that, that have PTSD, that have been through very, very traumatic situations, and their nervous system will run to the dorsal vagal. And so they get kind of stuck in their lives in the freeze response. So they're out of balance, right? Because they're not using both. And we need both in our lives. We, we, we want to retreat into meditation and we want to go out and have a good meal with our family, right? We want both of those to function in a balanced kind of way. And so this person that's had trauma is running home to the dorsal vagal. And so a lot of therapists will see the freeze response as a negative thing because of that experience with these clients, right? But it's a mistake. They are running home to mama. They are running home to the dorsal vagal, which is mama in your nervous system. It's the safest, most secure place. And so this wonderful story they have. So a baby is crying, right? And the first cry is, ah, the first cry is, ah, give me milk, give me milk, right? Ah, you can hear it, right? And then they get into the sympathetic system. Because their needs have not been met, they get into the sympathetic system next. So it gets an angry cry. Ah! I need a bottle, ah, feed me, right? And eventually, if that need is not met, then the child, the baby will retreat and the cry will change again. And it will go down into the parasympathetic, dorsal parasympathetic system and it will be, ah. And so it's seen as a negative. You didn't meet the needs and so the child retreated into the dorsal parasympathetic. What I would like to point out is that the nervous system is running home to the most safe and the most secure place in the entire nervous system. That is the dorsal parasympathetic. And so that's where we're going in meditation. I'd like to bring, so here's a story that proves my point. One of my students who is going into Samadhi about Halfway through his meditative journey, he said he really had to focus on relaxing his face. So he had to relax the chest and get into the tranquil breath. And he had to relax the face and really withdraw backwards from the face towards the medulla. And the medulla is the pinnacle of the dorsal parasympathetic system. And so he's relaxing the face, right? That's the ventral vagal. The ventral vagal comes from the gut and it goes straight up into the face. And he felt that he had to retreat from that and go back into the dorsal vagal more completely. So he was already stimulating, awakening the dorsal vagal. He was getting all of the four proofs, all of the five breath states. He was getting into the very beginnings of absorption and he realized I have to relax from the face more deeply, more profoundly. Doing that 
is what enabled him to get deeper into absorption and finally into samadhi. So there is a story that proves my point. We are withdrawing from the ventral vagal in very deep meditation, and we are going into the dorsal vagal. We are running home to mama. We are running home to that very deep parasympathetic system. And so the body is going into a very low idle state, which is the, the whole point of yoga, is put the body in a low idle state so we can use the mind to enter into absorption, the higher mind, right? So what are the sensations of the freeze response? Well, one of the sensations is that as you are sitting very still, very, very important, we will not enter into the freeze response if we are not following the principle of sitting very still. So when you put together heart rate variability resonant breathing and sitting very still, you will eventually get the freeze response. So that's how you do it. Heart rate variability resonance and sitting very still. Those two things will eventually create the freeze response. It's not something that we can force. It's something that just kind of shows up. So we have to embrace it and let it come into us, right? So tingling on the skin anywhere along the skin, whatever part of the body is the most relaxed, it could be your face, your chest, your arms, your hands, your thighs, whatever is the most relaxed might begin to tingle. It also might start to get numb. So one part of the body can get numb, another part of the body can get numb. You'll notice that you felt your body one way and now it feels different. Well, that's very important. On Patreon, I've been writing about the four parts of the left brain that we are getting out of. And so as we get out of the body image and the body map, we begin to lose pieces of it. And so this is an interruption of the body image and the body map. So we're interrupting those parts of the left brain. So this is a very, very big sign of deep meditation. A lot of yogis will tell me, well, my legs disappeared or my lower body disappeared. One of my students called me up. He said, my joints disappeared. I thought, oh, how interesting. Well, he was a martial artist. He pays special attention to his joints. And so his joints very interestingly disappeared during his meditation, just his joints during that one meditation. So different parts of the body can begin to get numb or disappear or they can feel as if it is a shadow of what it was. So you feel your body one way and now it feels like a shadow. The, the head and the torso can become disconnected. So you'll feel like your head is over here and your body is over here. So they have gone crosswise somehow, right? So your head goes one way and your body goes another way. And Oh my God, what is happening to me? Well, that left brain action of the body image and the body map are being interrupted, right? So it's a pattern interrupt. In NLP, we talk about pattern interrupting. Well, in meditation, we're doing a pattern interrupt on what we think is real. And these actions of the left brain tell us what normal life is supposed to be, what it's supposed to be real. And we are interrupting that process in order to get closer to the truth of what's actually inside of us. So the, the body and the head can feel disjointed or they might just feel separated. Like the body is, is way down here and the head is way up here. So that's another sensation. That's an interruption of the normal body image and body map that's in the left brain. Those are actions of the left brain. That again is a sign of a very deep freeze response. So bit by bit, different parts of the body can feel more and more numb and they can feel more and more ethereal or ghost-like. They also might feel as if they are frozen in place. You can feel a very cool wave going down through the body, possibly. If you do, great. If you don't, that's fine too. You don't have to feel any one of these things. They're all signs of the same freeze response. And you might feel it differently than other people feel it and process it. So waves of cool energy running through the body. The, uh, the entire body can feel as if it has cooled way down. 
and it will actually physically cool down as you meditate. Sometimes the body may heat up as we activate the immune system, but as we get into the freeze response, it will actually get more and more cool. The body can feel as if it is frozen in place. So I often get this sensation as if my body is a, a shell and energy is swimming inside of it. It's doing all kinds of things, but the outside of this shell is frozen in place and I don't even want to move a whisper because I feel like I'll break that freeze, that shell-like freeze on the outside of the body. So finally, all of these sensations will culminate in the entire body becoming more and more ghost-like or ethereal and disappearing from our awareness. It's not actually disappearing, it's not actually levitating, it's not actually doing all of these things. It's just disappearing from our awareness as we interrupt those left brain programs that have been going on for so long. So all of those are possible signs of the freeze response. It means you're doing a very good job of activating that dorsal vagal as you increase that thoracic pressure. And how did we accomplish all of this? Heart rate, variability, resonant breathing, and sitting very still. Very, very, very simple, right? Meditation, in essence, is so simple, and yet it's a task we're not used to, and so it gets a little bit hard. But as you can see, as you keep practicing, as you keep going for it, it will become easier and happen quicker. A quick note on long meditations, I'm not a fan. Get good at your short meditations and then make that a little bit bigger and get good at that length of a meditation and then make it a little bit bigger. But don't try and chew off this huge long meditation trying to get into the freeze response. See if you can get it early on and then make it a little bit longer and then make it a little bit longer. But don't try and jump into a long meditation right away because you'll actually stimulate your sympathetic system instead of that wonderful dorsal parasympathetic. So it's like, okay, I have two hours to meditate. I really wanna get this thing. How do I do it, Forrest? Should I just do one long two hour meditation? No, break it into parts. So do 10 minutes, do 15 minutes, do 20 minutes, and then break it into these little pieces and see how deep you can get in each one. Give yourself a little break so you don't get into that sympathetic system. It's all about the dorsal vagal complex. That's what it's all about. That's where it's all hidden. That's the first part of the story and then it gets into the left and right brain. And that is the whole thing in a nutshell. The dorsal parasympathetic and the left right brain. Boom, you got the whole story right there in a nutshell. Isn't that amazing? The freeze response, we know about it from St. Teresa of Avila. They, she would be praying very deeply and sh her whole body would become frozen in place, so frozen that the nuns would lift her out of the kneeling posture and would go place her in bed because she would be there in samadhi for hours. And the yogis in India as well become frozen. And so we know about this, but it's not only in samadhi, it happens before the body gets more and more comfortable and the normal aches and pains of sitting in that posture for a long time get wiped out. The freeze response overcomes all of them. So it's a, it's a glorious thing to get into. Your body will feel crystalline and refreshed as never before. And it's, it's just a, a wonderful sign that you're doing a very good job activating that wonderful dorsal vagal complex. So I hope you loved this. I hope it was very valuable in understanding what the freeze response is. If you love this video, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you.